All right, everybody, we're back with another episode of the Wealth of the Culture podcast. And today we're, uh, you know, we're going to talk about options. Options trading has been real big, especially lately with everything going on in the world, with uh, the whole GameStop and Robinhood and all that, that scandal. But I have uh, one half of the Options Bay team here. Her name is Chaz. So I'll let her go ahead and introduce herself, give you a little background about her. Her other partner, Elena, couldn't make it. She's busy tutoring and helping out other people out there get started. So if you want to uh, introduce yourself and give everybody a little bit of your background, what you do. Okay, well, I'm Chaz. So I'm 27 and I live in Houston, Texas. I've been here for a year and a couple of months now. I'm actually a respiratory therapist. So I trade during the day and then work at night. So I have like a weird sleeping pattern. Um, I went to SFA in Nacogdoches, Texas, and I went to UT Health. So I have a bachelor's and master's degree, nothing in finance. So this is all completely new to me. Uh, I started investing in 2018. Uh, with very small accounts, I really didn't even know what I was doing. And then in March of 2020, during the crash, I saw all over the news about the stock market and everything. So I decided to do more research, and that's how I got into options trading. I basically taught myself everything. And then at that point, I joined Barge Consulting Group, and that's like a group created by Stephen Barge. And once I joined that group, that's when I like just flew through options. It was great. I loved it. Okay. so. You say you started options prior to finding, uh, I guess, Barge Consulting Group? Mm-hmm. I just really like, at first I was on Robinhood just searching, looking through stuff. And then I think I went on Investopedia and I like just got the rundown on options. And I think I brought like a put on Ford like maybe a couple of days later. And I was like, oh my God, look, I just made like $20. Okay. Like I put in five, made 20 So I was hype about that. And then that's when I just started doing more research on YouTube. And once I felt like I wasn't really making that much money, but I saw other people making a lot of money, that's when I joined Barge Consulting. And once I was in that like trading community, that's when I saw like, oh, there's like a lot of potential as a side income or full income for me in options trading. But uh, okay, so so you started off kind of just uh, also just I guess more so just testing the waters, and then yeah. you and I would assume that. I've seen the uh, bars thing a, a little bit. I haven't really seen too much about it. I haven't looked into it. But I'm assuming that's like more of a mentorship type deal. Where Yeah. So at the time he was selling, um, like he had an options guide, a stock guide, and then he had a, a bundle together. So I got the options guide because I already knew about stocks. And the options guide taught me like a lot of stuff I didn't know, even though I was just playing around with options. Um, and then once you got the guide, you were invited to his Slack community. And in the Slack community, that's where I met Elena, actually. And um, everybody just talks about trades they're doing or people ask questions and you get answers. So it's basically, it's like a beginner, intermediate type of chat. Um, everybody just, we, we've been doing this since what? I've been in since April. So I've been in that chat like consistently, like every day since April. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about y'all, uh, you and Elena's platform, Asha's Bay. So Elena, that's your partner. Uh, I think she's... What I know, she said she's full time trading. So yes. Okay. Yeah, um, she- last year, after a few months of trading, Elena quit her job. Like she just didn't want to work at that job anymore, and she just went full time. Um, so you know that's a little stressful because you have to make money, you know. And then some days you don't want to trade, and so it's like a little bit stressful for her. But she's been doing it this whole time. I'm really proud of her actually, because I don't know if I can take that step yet, just because I like having a steady mm-hmm. income. And knowing when I'm gonna get paid. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, that's man, that's crazy, and it's and it, that's wild. That's wild as hell because I don't think I could. I'd have to have some stuff situated before I go and take that leap right there. Yeah. And I mean, you you just say you seem the same way because you still got your your I guess well not day job but your night job. Yeah. I, I get the nights. I don't work nights for which it works <laughs> out well for trading and stuff actually. But, yeah. It uh, does. So how did so do y'all have y'all ever like did y'all just form this um I guess through. That uh, that barge. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we were both in the chat, and um, we I had made like a small group of people from the chat, and I noticed Elena was like killing it with her trades. She was real cool, so I was like, "Hey, you want to join our little small group chat?" And she was like, "Sure." And then ever since then, like we were friends, and then we were like, you know, we have the same goals. We could we could do something really big together. Like if we just like settle down and get to work. That's basically what we did. We started our Instagram, and then it was just like up from there. 
So y'all, so y'all like never met or nothing? Like, uh, never met in person. You know, we FaceTime, talk on the phone. Uh, she lives in Tennessee and I live in Texas. So it's, and then with the pandemic, I'm pretty sure if all the stuff didn't happen, I would have already been like to see her. She would have came to see me, but it's just hard with the travel situation and everything like that. Like, I just want to pivot for a second. Cause that's like, I don't think y'all, that's pretty, that's pretty dope. <laughs> because people are really like y'all literally just met up through a whole virtual community and, and got something started that way. And it's crazy because yeah. that's how I that's very interesting because I know a lot of people would be scared to like somebody you don't know, you doing now y'all doing business. I know y'all sell courses and like uh ebooks and stuff, right? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so. that'd be that's definitely <laughs> different. I, I give it to y'all though, man, because so how did Let's kind of talk about, because I, I can't ask later how she, how, how it's for, but like, how is life for you? You know, because you do have your actual job that you're still working at. Like, so how is that for you being a trader and also pairing um, that with work? So before it wasn't, well, at first when COVID first started, it wasn't that bad here. And then I think in like June, we hit like a huge surge. So I was always tired. Like right after work, I trade. Basically, I get off at like seven, come home, take a shower, and then like I'm on my phone, ready to trade. So it's been kind of stressful. And then like after this Christmas surge happened, I don't know what happened. Like it's as bad as ever. So I'm always always tired. That's why I'm not on Clubhouse that much. Or if I'm off, I'm trying not to be on Clubhouse because I just need like a mental break sometimes. But yeah. I'm really just pushing like this year I've been I feel like I've been like really killing it on my trades. I've tried to be conservative until this week. Um, I've tried to like cut down on trades, make sure they're all profitable, maybe like one loss a week. So that way with less trades, I can focus more on like my mental health while I have to work and trade at the same time versus having like 20 trades open knowing I'm having to come home and figure out how I'm going to sell all these things at one time. So I do like maybe four or five trades a week now. Okay. So, oh man, that's pretty <laughs> crazy. And I, I didn't even think of, it didn't even dawn on me like, yeah, you are dealing with COVID and stuff. And you in Texas too. So that's, oof. yes, it's, it's, it's like crazy now. Um, just, I know this is like kind of sad or whatever, but like there's deaths all the time. And before deaths were kind of like every now and again, but now it's like all the time. So it's just, it gets stressful and depressing at times. So at least like I have like this other part of my life that is a little bit more fun and yeah. exciting <laughs> than my job. Yeah, right for sure. That, yeah, that, golly. I can only imagine because I, I didn't, it didn't even like, it just dawned like you in the hospitals every day. God, have you done yeah. that? This is going to be side topic. Have you done the, you got the vaccine and all that, right? Or So no, actually I had COVID in November. And when the when they first started giving the vaccine, they're like, if you've had COVID in the past three months, then you don't need to get the vaccine at this moment. So I have not had it yet. A few of my coworkers have had it, and you know they look fine. That's kind of like my I'm like, mm, let me keep watching them to see how they look, and everything's uh, okay. So I think uh, maybe after the summer or something. <laughs> Uh, lo low key, you probably dodged a bullet because I know some people that's going. I know one guy, he going through it right now. He just got the vaccine. And I know another girl, she like she had a real rough. But I mean, I do know other people that's been just fine. So I guess it just depends on the person. But yeah, yeah you, you you probably dodged a bullet. You walk, you got the walking antibody. So really, I mean, you good right now. So yeah, they're saying it doesn't last that long. So that's the only thing. And I don't want to get it again, even though it wasn't that bad for me. I'm just like, what will happen the next time? Maybe I got lucky this time. So. Yeah, especially with uh, all these new strains they're talking about coming out like every freaking week. I feel like I hear something else like mm -hmm. something new coming out. Yeah, that's wild. So sure. what I want, like, let's take a little pivot real quick because we talk about options. Like just for okay. everybody, because y'all, these are the girls that, you know, they they are the people to talk to. Like I don't, I have a select few people. I'll just say, hey, go talk to them because I'm still learning the options. I'm going to mm -hmm. stop. So let's kind of just like options one-on-one -on -one real quick. Like can you just break down like, what are people like, what are options and like calls and puts and stuff like that? Okay. So in like the simplest terms, I always say options are like, you don't want to say gambling, but it's basically you're betting on if a stock is going to go up or down. So if you think the stock's going up, that's a call. If you think the stock's going down, that's a put. But this is by a certain expiration date. So that's like the difference between stocks. When you buy a stock, it's yours for however long until that company yeah. delists or you sell. But an option, you only have it up until that expiration date. So either you have to sell it or you can exercise it. So 
if you exercise it, you would get 100 shares of the company. So uh, options are just contracts and they give you the right to buy or sell 100 shares of a company, but you don't necessarily have to. That makes sense. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, what I what I know is, you know, calls basically, I would put it like this, because this is when I found out, when I found out about options, this is when I found out like it's real, like, you know, a lot of times you think about stocks, you need a whole bunch of stocks to really make money when a move happens. Yeah. When you're talking options though, this puts it on like, this just amplifies it to me because I know you got to call like this is one of them things where you can make money. A lot of people say you can only make money in the stock market when stuff is going up. But to me, you know, options gives you that opportunity. I mean, along with futures, that gives you the opportunity to make money no matter which way or which direction mm -hmm. stock goes. And I mean, a lot of people say it's gambling, but I mean, to me, it's it's calculated risk. That's what I'll say. So, yeah. so I do know uh, you got the calls, calls basically when price increases, correct? And mm -hmm. So oh. when the stock is going up the price, you want to get a call. If you believe it's going to go down, then you'll get a put. So basically, you can play both sides of the market. Like Friday, we were all playing puts because the market was like going down due to all this stuff going on. I got, I got a question. Did y'all get into uh, anything with the GameStop and, and all of that? None of us played GameStop. We like maybe last year we probably would have jumped in. But this year, like we're on a new way. But. A lot of people did do AMC. That's in our group. Um, I know Elena made a good amount on AMC. I tried to play like the stocks on the outskirts. So I did like BlackBerry, Rocket Mortgage. Uh, I had a Bed Bath & Beyond call, which I sold way too early. And I was so upset because like I think wow. I sold and made $100. And then the next day it was like worth $1,500. I was like, what? Yeah, and see, y'all got crazy. Y'all got better. Y'all got better stomachs than I do because I just sat there and watched. <laughs> I done, I've done all. I've been a part of that type of stuff, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to be that last person to the party, especially when I started <laughs> seeing what happened. Uh, to like the, I think what last week was like Monday or Tuesday. They just start halting trading and stuff like that. So I mean, I was, I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not in this. It messed up a couple of my long term option plays, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, real quick, can you talk about like? Do y'all have a specific, because, okay, so we got, can you explain what strike prices are and if y'all have, like, a specific strategy on picking y'all's strike prices? So a strike price is what you think the stock is going to go to. So if it's a call, it's above the price, usually, like, above the price that it is now, or put, it's below the price. So for me, I usually go based off of, so a few things, my budget. So say if I have, like, I only want to put $500 into a trade. And I look at a strike price and it's like right above in the money and it's like 600. I'm not going to buy that. I'm going to go look further out of the money. And then I'll look at the Greeks and we'll see like how much, uh, like is the theta going to kill this? I know that's, that's a lot, but if the theta is going to kill my call, am I not going to make any money? I want to look at the open interest. Are there a lot of people buying this call? Because if nobody's buying the call, then you're going to be, it's not going to sell. So that's one thing you don't want to buy is something that nobody cares about. So that's a big thing is volume and interest. Open interest is probably in my budget is based off of what I pick for the strike price. And then expiration, it depends. If I'm feeling risky, if I think that stock's about to move that week, I might go weekly. But usually we try to go one or two weeks out for our expiration. Okay, y'all so, oh, yeah, super, y'all super short term. I, I, I'm working <laughs> my way to that. So, uh since you brought it up, like real quick, just give everybody like a little clinic, right? So you brought up the Greeks and um and open interest volume and stuff like that. You got to break down a couple of the, like the Greeks. Look, because I know not everybody looks at. I think what is it, like five Greeks. Mm, uh, I think most yeah. of the time, I think most of the time people just look at uh what gamma, delta, delta, and what. I just look at the delta, which tells you like how much per dollar amount your contract will go up or down. So we usually try to do like if it's point three or higher, then that's probably a good contract. Because that shows like how much money you're going to make every time that stock goes up a dollar or whatever. And mm -hmm. then data is like the most important because that's your time decay. So you want to look at uh, how much it's going to. It's like a number value. You can look up like the different numbers in the calculations. But it shows you like how much your uh, contract is going to decay. So if you have a weekly, your data is usually really high because maybe Monday or Tuesday is when you're going to make the most money. And then after that, it's just going to keep decreasing unless like it's Tesla or something and it just goes crazy the next day. So those are the two things I really look at. I think row is like interest rates, which nobody really looks at. 
Yeah. Um, gamma is related to the delta. And then vega is your like volatility. But it shows you what your IV is anyways on the, uh, well, depending on which broker you use, but it'll show you what the IV is for the, the contract. You don't want to, usually you don't want to get anything too high with volatility because you can get crushed in between if your your contract doesn't move. Okay. And uh, can you just explain like what for anybody that, because I know a lot of people don't have a clue about, they they are clueless. I've been getting, especially with all this gangster stuff, I've been getting texts and calls yeah. like crazy weeks about like uh so can you talk about open interest because that i think that's kind of the biggest thing for people to pay attention because if nobody wants that contract it's pointless to go waste money on it you really just said yes so, so your open interest shows like how many how many uh people are holding those those contracts or how many contracts that are open sorry so you want to look and see like I, I mean i don't have a specific number but if i see like a thousand for the open interest i'm like okay people people are buying this people want this and if you go like for like far, far, far out in your expiration date, you'll notice that the open interest is usually smaller because people aren't usually playing super long term. But when you get closer to your expiration date, the open interest might go up. So usually for like long term, you don't have to worry about that as much. But if you're going short, short term, you need to worry about how many people are buying. So like, say, Apple, there's always people buying those contracts. So there's always people in that. But if you're picking something like. Before Tootsie Roll, I didn't even know Tootsie Roll was a stock until this week. I got a, so, oh yeah, yeah, I didn't know that either. That's crazy. It was one of the meme stocks this week. So before that, I'm assuming there probably wasn't a lot of people buying Tootsie Roll contracts or whatever. But now, I mean, there are. So you just have to really just watch the news, watch like Twitter and see like what are people talking about. Uh, there's other options like stock twits. You can see what's trending on there and you can just see like which stocks people care about at this time. That's okay. usually how I do it. Or you can do a scanner and look on a scanner and see which stocks have like high volume. That's another thing I do too. Oh, okay. So yeah, you got the whole professional setup for real. <laughs> <laughs> a free so, scanner. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Because I know, okay. So another thing, because I know people going to ask me this too. You mentioned like you don't buy stuff that's too close to in the money. You go further out of the money. Can you kind of explain like moneyness? Because I do know that. Doesn't that affect the Greeks and stuff like that? Can you just mm -hmm. give a little breakdown to people for that? So in the money is like, it's already, it's below what the stock say. Okay. Let's say the stock is 125 and you go to $124 for a call. So you're already in the money. It's already past what your strike is. So that contract is going to be way more expensive because it's already in the money. And you know that you most likely will profit as long as the stock keeps going up. But most people can't afford that. And then at the money is just like at that exact price. And then you have out of the money. So a lot of people play out of the money. Out of the money would be like if your stock is 125, you buy a $126 strike. So that will be on the more expensive side because it's so close to the price of the stock. But it's you you're safer in that way. I play usually out of the money, but if I'm gonna go far out of the money, I'm gonna go further in my expiration date just to be safe. You don't wanna say like, oh, this stock only moves two dollars a month, and you go like from a 125 to 140, like you're yeah. you're not even gonna be anywhere close. As long as the stock is moving in your direction, you might profit as long as you had a good entry. So, so you want to get the lowest entry possible. You do not want to buy your contract when the stock, like when the contract is super high. If the highest is two hundred dollars and you buy it two hundred dollars, you're most likely gonna lose out. You want to get in a low entry. That's usually what I what I do at least for my strategy. Okay, you just um. What what are the like pros and cons, I guess, of going further out the money? Because I know you were mentioning that you you go out of the money. So mm -hmm. what are the advantages of that? I mean, what, what are some of the advantages? I think it's cheaper. Like you can load up on contracts. That's another thing I do. I've been doing lately, like my rocket uh, play I just had. So I got 27 contracts. They were all I spent a different amount of money, but say ten dollars per contract. So I can just stack up my contracts and then. Say my $10 contracts go to $75. Now I just made like a bag from that because I have 27 okay. contracts. But if I were to buy the end the money contract, it'd be like, say, $500. I'm only buying one contract. I'm not going to buy two contracts. Just just based off of my account size, what I'm comfortable with and like my risk tolerance. I mean, some people might put like 20000 on a contract, but I'm not going to do that. That's just me. So out of the money is a little bit cheaper it's cheaper for you but it can be a little bit more risky you just got to know like which stock you're buying if you go out of the money on tesla 
I mean, you're usually good because that stock can move like $100 in a day. So it's usually okay. But if you're going like Pfizer, that moves like a dollar a month, then it might be a struggle to get there. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned all that, with, especially with the expiration days and stuff like that. That's that's to me the biggest key because if you have somebody that had an expiration day like coming up on Friday when everything tanked and they was in a call, you know, call anticipation yeah. is going up. That's a lot of the reason why a lot of people, I have people hit me up, like, how do I sell out of this? And I'm just like, so you bought here and didn't know, they didn't have a clue how to get out of it. I get out yeah, of the like, train. A lot of people say that. They're like, I brought this. What do I do? I'm like, why did you buy that? Like, <laughs> we always say you need to be informed, like, know what you're doing before you do it because you don't want to lose money just because you have no idea what you're doing when you could have took the time to research. So we always say, like, please, like, just do some research, watch some videos, read some some ebooks or something, and before you jump into the market, for sure. So I do know that y'all have, you know, Options Bank, they have a whole, it's basically the platform to teach people and yes. get everybody started. I think, um, can you kind of break down, I mean, I want to know this, really. Mm -hmm. Y'all are women, and this is pretty much like a male dominant industry. I, like I was mentioning, sure. I don't see too many. I don't see too many women in this. Okay, so you kind of just talk about how that. How do y'all feel like being like one of the few women in this game? So at the beginning, like say I'm on Twitter, I tweet a lot about stocks and my stock picks. A lot of men were like harassing me, like you don't know what you're talking about, or like just if I said anything about a stock they like, if I said like, oh, that stock's not gonna move, man, they would attack me. Like it was crazy. And then I guess after they started to respect me more, like see the gains I've had, see that I kind of know what I'm talking about, then like guys would come to me and ask me for advice. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Like men are messaging me, asking me like advice on how how do they do this? How do they start? Like how does this work? And I'm like, wow, like men are starting to respect us. Like, especially with being, even on Clubhouse when we first started, uh, it would, men would be talking over us. We'd try to answer a question and a man be like, no, 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 let me, let me answer. I got this. And we'd be like, oh, wow. Like, but now I guess once they like get to know us, see our Instagram, see what we're doing now, they like, people invite us up, want us to talk. They're looking to see what we think about certain subjects and things. So I guess it just took, more time for us to get the respect like in this realm than it would for a man like say a man could probably just walk in and everybody be like oh you know he knows what he's talking about but for us we had to build up to that i mean it, it sucks but that's why we're doing what we're doing we want to be where it's women are able to have a voice and be able to say like hey i know what i'm doing and show everybody they know what they're doing that's that's part of what our mission is really okay all i say is much respect to y'all Y'all are some of the people I kind of direct, especially women, too, because a lot of times women don't want to be dealing with a bunch of men because they, <laughs> they don't know how to approach them or something. They got to work with all the extra stuff. So yeah. I, I kind of shoot y'all platform. And I mean, I might, uh, we could try to get together and do like a little raffle or something for a few people. I mean, oh, how cool. much y'all course? I don't want to, I don't want to break my pocket. Y'all, how, how much y'all course? <laughs> my course is $55. Uh, yeah, we, we can work something out. Yeah. We can work something <laughs> out. I'll just raffle. I'll get, get somebody a, uh, we could do something together, you know, they follow you and follow us or whatever, and we'll do a raffle or, and something like that, get a pool going and do something like that, get somebody an okay. opportunity just to get into the game. Because, I mean, to me, this is uh, – this podcast, you know, it's, it's, it's primarily towards the black community and stuff, and I just want to get them involved in building wealth. So mm -hmm. a lot of times, like I say, we don't know what we don't know. That's a big thing for me. And exactly. to me, it's kind of like what good is it if, you know, we got like – you know, we got success. What good is it though if everybody around is struggling? So to me – the best best thing to do is kind of reach out and bring somebody else up with you when you get some stuff, when you get stuff going in your favor. So, I mean, yeah, we could definitely, mo you know, most definitely can link up and do something. I mean, you want to do a clubhouse, whatever. We could do IG. It don't matter to me. But, yeah, at least get one person in there because that could change somebody's life. I mean, that's all it takes, you know, just have access to that uh, information. You know, I mm -hmm. just I like what y'all doing. It's, a pretty, it's pretty dope to me because, I mean, especially the fact that y'all, like, this is the thing I say with women, man. Y'all don't, like, it's just about women. Y'all get it and y'all get going and y'all y'all don't stop. This is all like a thousand. So I, I yeah. definitely applaud y'all because like you say, you didn't even know Atlanta. Y'all kind of just met up through the virtual community <laughs> and y'all yeah. learned and y'all got it going and y'all literally figured this out and put together a whole platform to help people out. So I definitely say big ups to y'all. But what I want to do is I got this, uh, this segment. I got questions from the culture 
It's just uh, I only take like a couple questions. Uh, I guess I'll just throw out there like I'm oh, bringing these people on. You know, if y'all want to shoot me some questions or anything about that for them, uh, you know, I'll just go about that. Word. So I'm going to just read off. Maybe I'll do like two or three. You could just uh, answer these. Okay. So they want to know how long did it take you to get good and to become second nature? Uh, I would say it, it depends because of, it depends on the market, honestly. Like the market could be going like crazy, like it's been doing. So you feel like you know what you're doing. You're killing it, You're making money. And then, bam, it'll drop. And you're like, wait, what? Like all my calls are worthless. So it, it took a minute. Like I realized in October, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm not perfect at this. I still need to keep researching learning uh, like charts, technical analysis. I need to continue to grow every day if I want to keep making money because the market is changing all the time. So I think you're always just going to be like learning. It's never going to be like, oh, I'm an expert. Well, not now at least. It's going to take a little bit of time, maybe like a few months at least before you feel really, really comfortable on what you're doing. Okay. Uh, just read off uh, two more. Uh, they said, okay. do you have any special method to uh, beginning or getting started? Uh, like I said, as basically research, um, I always would say you go look online, just see, look up options trading. What is it? How does it work? Um, I would say not even if you, not that you had to buy our ebook, but definitely try to put yourself with a group of people that are doing the same thing. So joining some type of discord or trading community is definitely like a good way to start too. Cause then you can just see like what people are doing daily. And then I guess I would say, yeah, just your research, do that. Paper trading is another thing, too. I forgot about that. You could paper trade on like E-Trade and I think Thinkorswim. And that way you can just see how it works without losing real money. It's all simulated money with real market data. Okay. So <clears throat> I do pivot into this last step. I do like a little lightning round. I mean, it never turns out to be a lightning round. People usually get going on their rants. And that's kind of get them up, too, especially like because we all black and they give them a chance to kind of you know, let a let a message be told, but I'll just mm -hmm. kind of run through this real quick. Just five questions, and then we can get you out of there because I know you're busy. You got you, you do have a job and stuff like that. And I don't want to hold it. <laughs> so, uh, first one, just like a standout on your timeline. It could be uh, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just somebody that's a black standout on your timeline. Uh, so I I always go to Steve. Maybe I should pick someone else. <laughs> Startup Steve, that was like the first black man I seen doing options trading. So he's always like my go-to. That's the Barge Consulting Group owner. Uh, I saw him doing that, and that's I was like, wow, like I want to be like him. I want to make two hundred, three hundred a day, and then we started making two thousand a day. So he's that. That was my first like person I seen on Twitter for sure. Hey, we we not gonna just go over that. <laughs> Y'all heard what she said? Two thousand a day. It, yeah. That, yeah, hey, that's see, and that's what I'm saying. That's the difference between these options and just regular stocks, and that's why I'm getting on that. I'm I'm learning. That's why I started learning stuff because that money is just different when you start talking about options. So, yes. I've hey. got friends that make ten thousand a day. I haven't got there yet. I don't know when I'm gonna get there, but that's always been like our goal. Like, let's try to make ten thousand a day. Like, that's always our thing. Hey, that's what's up though. That's where it starts though. You got a vision. And, yes. uh, so, next question: Like, you have a book recommendation for anybody? Like, it could be about anything necessarily had to be about options doesn't have to be about options oh well i'm like a i'm kind of a nerd i like sci-fi books and like fantasy books nobody likes those but i do there's this book called the game i think it's by terry i can't remember the last name but it's like it's so cool to me <laughs> it's basically like if the world was like a simulation and you think you're living a life, but you're really in a game. And like, it just ties all into like religion and just every daily things we do is based off of like a computer. Like say God is the motherboard. I know that sounds so weird, but if you read the book, you'd be like, oh my God, it'll make you think about life. Like everything you do, like glitches and just life. And like, <laughs> so weird. like it all just goes together. I don't know. That's like my favorite book, the game. It's like a whole series. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, that, like that kind of. That's not like black. That's not like a black mirror stuff. So. Yes, yeah, it's like black mirror. I love black mirror. So yeah. <laughs> hey, that gotta be the most. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of people. <laughs> I can't. I don't got life books. <laughs> I never got. I can't read finance books. Like I just don't have the the. 
what's the attention span? Like, I, if I'm going to read, read a book, it has to be, like, interesting, like, something's going on. So I don't read too many self-help books. I'll watch some videos here and there, but I don't read, like, finance books at all. And that wasn't, like, my initial passion in life anyway. So it's just something I kind of fell into, and then I just kept growing with it. Okay. So my next question, what failure taught you the most? Oh, Lord. I've had so <laughs> many failures. Uh, maybe when I very first started, I think we like just got this first stimulus and I had been watching beyond the stock and I'm like, Oh, I love beyond like this thing is going crazy. I'm about to just put $700 of my stimulus into this. So I put $700 and like, I swear, as soon as I put it in, that thing just went down. It was like 600, 500. I was like, what, where's my money going? <laughs> And I went and I looked online and there was some analyst, I can't remember his name. Some analyst was like, beyond stock is terrible. I'm getting a downgrade. This stock should not be this high high or whatever. And like, he just crashed it and my money was just going. So I sold, I think I sold for like $400. So I had lost like $300 and I was so sad. But that definitely taught me like a bajillion lessons. First off, don't just jump into something without doing research. Second, stop losses. If you're going to put in a big amount of money and you don't want to lose it, all of it, you need to put in a stop loss. And then the third thing was I could have waited. Like I had a whole like week left on the expiration. I just saw that money just going down and I was like, I can't do this. And I just sold it. But I probably could have made most of my money back by like the middle of the week. So that taught me like three lessons at one time and it hurt. But luckily that wasn't my money. Like it was just stimulus money. So. Hey, I mean, at least you kept going, though, because you could have stopped. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I money. was hurt. I was like, oh, my God. I don't even want to tell anybody I did this. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, that was at the very beginning. Hey, and I look at you making two grand a day. Look at the guy. Yeah, least. not always, but, you know, that, that happens here and there. I love the 2,000 days. <laughs> so uh, my next question is, what is what thing you think the black community needs to improve on? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I could, where do I start? I guess for me, coming from like a healthcare standpoint, I think we need to take care of our bodies more. Like, um, say, say, like a lot of people are on medications and they don't, they're not compliant, they don't take them, or they don't go to the hospital because they're afraid of going to the hospital. That's the thing. Like, I really feel like me, I personally get black doctors whenever I choose my doctor, I choose a black doctor because I feel like I can trust them more. So I really think like black people, we need to look in our community more for people that will take care of us or help us instead of being scared of taking care of yourself, especially like even like getting a going to the gym, getting a fitness trainer get that you feel like is going to take care of you or help you. Don't just be like, oh. I don't want to do this because I don't trust the system or whatever, but you're really hurting yourself in the long run. That's my biggest thing. Like people come to our hospital and say, Oh, I, I didn't know I had diabetes. I didn't know I had this or that because they have not been to the doctor in like 20 years. So I think we really need to like get focused on getting our, our mind, our body, our soul together and making sure that we were working towards being better people every day. That's, that's basically my biggest thing. If you were yeah. talking, are you talking about in like financially? Nah, I just period. Like, yeah, I get okay. so many different. That was a very different. I never really got anybody talk about like a health aspect. That's pretty. Yeah. That's a pretty dope perspective. Most people say something, you know, along the lines of learn or, or whatever. But that's pretty dope. Like, because nobody really thinks about, it, especially in the black men, we don't think about that. Like, even I'm guilty of stuff like that. So, I mean, that, yeah, that I don't even go to the doctor either, honestly, unless I have to for work. But yeah, I mean, that's how we scared. think. We, yeah. It'd be that. It'd be the fact you just like, I'm young. It ain't nothing going to happen because I'm 27 too. It's just like, oh, yeah, ain't nothing. I'm good. It's like, I don't think yeah. I got something. At least until I'm in my 30s, I'm like, okay, then I can start going. Like, all right. Cool. <laughs> that's, how, like, that's how a lot of my friends think. It's just like, I'm yeah. not even 30 yet. I'm good. So, I mean, that's definitely big. Now, mm -hmm. for my last question, though, what's one piece of advice you would give somebody? It could be about anything. I mean, you kind of took that and ran with it. So, it could be <laughs> about, about anything. Uh, I think. Um, let's say maybe just being, uh, always try to be like secure in yourself. I like one thing I will say is I always, before I would always worry about like, what are people doing? What do they think of me? Like, how are, how do they feel about the different actions I'm making? But now I'm so like, what do, what do I want? 
how do I feel? Like, I'm really, like, introspective about the things I do. And I feel like, ultimately, like, mentally, I'm feeling a lot better because I'm worried about what I'm doing. I've noticed, like, if I feel like I'm doing the right thing, everybody else around me is like, oh, look at what she's doing. Like, that's cool. That's amazing. And I think if you're just more positive about your out your outlook on life or trading or whatever skill or anything you want to do, then other people will follow along with it. But if you're feeling like people are going to be looking down on you, then they're going to be looking down on you. That's what I really just think. Like, it's all about your your outlook and your your mindset on things. I mean, honestly, that's a whole testament to y'all's entire platform, really, because you yes. said, like, that's how y'all started. Like, ain't nobody had no faith in y'all, but y'all kept faith in y'all selves, man. And I look at y'all. Got yes, people reaching exactly. out to y'all for podcast interviews. <laughs> I mean, I definitely want to thank you. You know, I thank you for coming on. I mean, I know Elena could be there. I mean, maybe we can get y'all both on back, you know, in a few mm-hmm. weeks, something like that. Just, you know, go go through y'all's journey and stuff like that. And I'm going to just keep watching y'all grow. Uh, like I said, we can get that going, see if we can do like a little raffle or something. Okay. Or something of that nature for uh, one of y'all's courses. And I just want to thank you again. Do me a favor though, because I, I do have quite a few women that actually like tune into this. So, can you just, uh, I've, I've directed a lot to y'all actually. I think I just be telling them, like, hey, go options, babe. Like, uh, so, direct, <laughs> uh, can you just drop like all y'all's contact information, how to get a hold of y'all? Okay. Or, all that. So, our website is optionsbay.com. And then for social media, we are on Facebook. We have a page and a group. And then we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on Pinterest. We're on TikTok. It's all Options Bay. So just at Options Bay. <laughs> if you want to email us, it's optionsbay at gmail.com. Um, the best way basically would probably be to DM us on either Twitter or Instagram. It's usually the best way to get in touch with us if you have any questions or anything. And we're happy to help and respond. Oh yeah, y'all on every golly. I ain't even <laughs> nobody. I ain't even. I ain't even no pictures of stuff. I thing. mean, we're kind of on YouTube, but there's no videos yet. But we got the space. <laughs> so. Oh, I feel you on that. That's kind of how my YouTube is. It's just, it's yeah. just. Man, I thought these interviews up, but that's about as far as it go. But yeah, that's dope though. But I, once again, I want to thank you. Sucks, uh, later could be here, but hey, I got one half. That's all we need though. You gave the information <laughs> that people need, and yeah. we're gonna. Hey, we're gonna be in touch. I'm gonna be watching y'all. And, you know, mm-hmm. I wish y'all the most success. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Stop the show.